So we're here today at Fat Cats with Tommy Sell. Tommy, pre-season, how's it been going? What have you been up to? Before Christmas in November, I started training with Kirk Gibbons again, trainer I've used for a long time. Um, so that was good. I had two months with Kirk and then at the end, just before Christmas, I started riding, I think two weeks before Christmas. Um, after Christmas, I went to Spain with uh, Sam and Alex Lowe's and Leon Haslam. I spent three weeks there. They, they was riding their mini bikes and I was riding um, the, the motocross tracks nearby, Red Sands a little bit. Uh, a couple of other tracks down there. That was really nice just to be with that, that group of people that all, yeah, you know, they're, they're winners, they want to do well and um, surrounding myself with people like that, I feel it's good for me. Um, that all went well, come back, race Hawkstone, I feel that went okay and then um, now we're here a week before really I fly to, um, to Argentina or not even a week, three days away, I fly and um, I'm feeling good, feeling strong, I feel like I've done my work and um, yeah, good or bad, come Argentina, I feel like I'm in a happy place and uh, yeah, something I can build on. I always used to go to America, obviously my the first time I went was with you back in 2005 or 2006 but I went there for a lot of years and then, um, I don't know, I feel like the way the MXGP is now and how the tracks are, they're changing a lot, it's not, it's, they're so technical and stuff, I don't think. Um, going to America you get the riding and you get the training but um, <coughs> it also costs a lot to go there and do it that way. Um, this year I didn't want to outlay a load of money to go to America but um, I went to Spain with, like I said, Sam and Alex Lowe's. There was a good, a good group of people there. My mechanic was able to come down with Spain or to Spain with me, and um, it just worked a lot better. And I'm, yeah, I'm glad it was a real successful. I wanted to talk to you a little <coughs> bit about donations. Most people don't realise you picked up an injury before the donations, didn't you? But didn't realise to what extent it was until after. I got caught in the first turn crash and my um, ankle got hit hard, and then. I'd just been injured that many times that I just didn't want to didn't want to believe that anything was wrong. So I just went to a physio and they um, they didn't they just they just looked in and said yeah it was probably a bruise and then so I just convinced myself all right it's a bruise. I was scared to get an X-ray just in case it showed it was um, okay. just in case it showed it was broke. Right okay. Um, and obviously I wanted to race those nations because I, yeah I want to race I want to do well. I just wanted to be there. I was in a good place and then I sort of got set back but I almost didn't let it set me back. But I just struggled especially with the conditions at Des It was about four weeks after and then I thought I'm still struggling so I got an x-ray or an MRI on it because I thought yeah I'll just get it done properly and um, yeah I broke my fibula. The doctor said and I was like oh just a just a hairline crack and he was like no um, it's a spiral fracture you would have had to have it plated but because it's been this time it's sort of started to set but I just had to wear a, um, an air boot for a couple of weeks and fortunately I didn't get injured when I was young and that's why I think I was so successful, obviously, from an early age. I never got injured. I, you know, I just seemed to just bang in the results. But and then I just picked up a few injuries. But it is what it is. It's just one of those sports, and I think sometimes it can be helped, and sometimes it can't be helped. I feel if I look back to last year, a couple of my injuries I had. If I really, I'm not. Yeah, if I'm honest, I think maybe I lacked a little bit of concentration the days when I got injured. Yeah. And um, that's when I think I've learned a little bit this just looking back and having so long out at first I didn't accept it I just oh it's a freak thing this is just um yeah I'm just unlucky but then when I sort of go back and yeah maybe Analyze I was it. a bit um I was just winging it a little bit I turned up to the tracks both days on my own and and I, I didn't really have a solid plan and then I, I just end up making such a small mistake both both crashes or they wasn't even crashes they I dabbed my knee and that hurt or not hurt but then that done my knee and then I I just ran in I stood it up in a turn and clipped a fence when I was riding a little sort of Mickey Mouse track but um, probably days when I look back where I, I didn't really need to go to the track when I broke my hand and I, I was a bit sick the day I went to Glen Helen and I done my knee I should have probably just called it a day and said I'll go in the gym but I wanted to ride and it, it, looking back it was just I needed more structure in my programme. You've healed up, you've come back, you've trained hard yeah, to get yourself you know, physically fit um, you haven't got a practice mechanic anymore. You're here at the track. Yeah, I, lo I love racing. I love riding, but it is very hard when it, you, you take the setbacks because you sort of, it's so hard mentally. Do you know what I mean? It's not, um, there's a time like now where I'm at the track and I just love it. Like, yeah. I've had a good day today. I've done my own bike. Like everybody like, though, that's what makes them. It's not a problem. I just, <coughs> I'm just in a zone at the minute that everything's going well. It's working, I'm training hard, I'm working hard. But then there's obviously times that it's just, everything's going the wrong way and it's just hard and you're riding in pain and like the leading up to Des Nations was just awful, do you know, but it's, I wanted to be there, I wanted to do it, but then now 
it, it swings and roundabouts in anything in life, and motocross is just the same as one of them. It's when it's good, it's really good. When it's bad, it's really bad. So you've taken control of, um, you know, a little bit more now, haven't you? As well, you know, so the, uh, down to the bike, you want to run us through a little uh, bit of that, can no, you? I'm not taking control, but obviously I've I've had bad years, so yep. you don't. I mean, my team and Kawasaki, I'm lucky they give me the support they have. Um, they look after the bikes, but I just haven't got someone at the track with me, so I. I just do little bits, you know, I'm only tightening the chain and, and doing little bits, but it, it's just one of those things that I think um, they're just busy at the minute getting the race bikes ready and um, yeah, there's not a training mechanic on the team now just because the team had cutbacks, yeah. I had cutbacks and salary obviously because of injuries and etc. And um, but. I feel really good. I feel the team have done everything they could with the with the resources they've yep. got for me. Kawasaki was really, really good to me, keeping me on again, and obviously giving me another shot after really not too bad years because 2016 I won the British and had some good results. But last year uh, it was a bad year, and um, yeah, I'm still here. I've got a good team. I've got a good bike, and um, I feel like I've done the work, and um, I'm really happy. Really not proud but I feel like yeah you know I've worked hard this winter and but um, there's not a lot more I could have done. You probably had to do a little bit more work yeah. behind behind the scenes than you ever have done before yeah. in your career. Yeah a lot more. But, yeah um, so I mean which is you know. Yeah I've just made it happen like a, there's t I could just be sat here going oh, I've got no mechanic this is this is <laughs> shit oh, what am I doing it's freezing cold but my mind's in a good place and that you know, if it's wet, if it's dry, if it's hard work, if I'm washing my bike myself tonight, it's not, I'm in a good place and I'm ready to put in the work to make it happen again. That showed as well at Hawkstone. First race at Hawkstone, I, I, was, I got a bad start and I was there and I picked my way off and I, I knew I, we're coming into Hawkstone, we said just, you know, just get through the weekend. Obviously, it's, it's a nice race, I like Hawkstone, but the team never really want to race Hawkstone because they feel that there's so much pressure on it from the bit the British public put a lot of pressure on even the teams and stuff. So Steve has a breakdown and yeah. it's just every it's everywhere. Where are the bike shit, this and that. So it was just one of those where we wanted to get through. So I just knew I got the first race out of the way. I wasn't up the front, but I just kept pushing and was somewhat solid. I felt good. It's about having a good feel for me, not just going like a madman and getting a result, but going, oh, that, that was terrible, but yeah. you know, I got this result. It's about yeah. that race. It's about feeling good, learning from it. Um, nice to run with those. Obviously, I got a good start, and then I just tagged along to the end. But it's, um, you know, I feel like it's not a problem for me to run the pace of the front guys. If there's, if they're there and opportunities there, I can go the speed. I always have been able to, um, yeah. and it shows when, you know, I do it when I'm right there. I can do it. But it was one of those things where, yeah, I made a couple of mistakes, and then I looked up, and then all of a sudden they were out of sight. Do you know what I mean? I was yeah. there for half the race made a couple of mistakes, tried to push on, made a couple more and then I lost touch and um, then I, I thought, you know, but I was happy. It was the first race of this The back, the back this markers season. changed it a little bit a little there, bit, to be fair. Um, a little bit, but then they also had the back markers. Yeah. They dealt with them obviously better than what I did. So it's just one of those situations that it was it was half the race. It was what it was, and but it's something again to build from. I feel a lot of the over the past years, I will get past, and then you sort of get a bit down. There's not that fight because. Who did you, know, you get past by though? Yeah, Jonas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it was good. It, so it made me want to pass. Yeah, a exactly. Bit more. Yeah. Well, not at first, and then after a couple of laps, I sort of settled back in. And I thought, oh, he's, that isn't good, is it? Really, he's on a 250. <laughs> I try and catch him back up. And yeah. Then I did. You but, did, um, yeah. And then I was trying to pass on the last lap, but I just made a little mistake and wasn't able to line him up in the spot. But um, it was just nice that I fought to the end, and I think my last lap, or well, last but one, was the same lap time as my best lap. So yep. I feel like my fitness is there, you know, and um, and all the pieces of the puzzle there. And now it's just uh, just getting to the first GP, and even if um, even if I don't, you know, there's a lot of good guys, so I just want to get through it. But at the same time, I feel I can do well. But if I if I don't and I struggle, I'm not going to be down about it. It's just one of those things that I have had a long time out. Yeah. And um, and you know, there's a lot of riders rolling on a roller coaster like Max after winning his nations, good winters. Everyone always says they've had a good winter. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I'm still in a position where I do need to build up. I do need to get some races under my belt. Because yeah. I feel good, but I haven't raced that much. I raced Hawkstone, and yeah, it was it was productive and it was um, a, a race step in the right direction. But I still wasn't fighting, you know, for the lead. But um, I mean, I would like to do that at some point this year. But you know, Argentina is just the first of a long season. Yeah. <laughs> 
training and what, what's the yeah, bush runners yeah, I'm here with Justin Morris today. Yep. Um, just he's helped me a little bit with some stuff. I join in some of his sessions and um, it's just nice to have someone there point out because I feel like I've got into you know, it's easy just to get into bad habits and you're riding on your own and you think, yeah, I've had a mega day, but just to have someone there and and pick me up on a few little things. So, you know, I might need to go up a gear or just this line and I'm a bit too aggressive in some corners, then it's just nice, um, you know, it's just, it's always nice to have someone pointing it out because it's easy to get stuck in um, stuck with bad habits. But I feel like sometimes I do, I, I go back and I think, yeah, I've had a good day, but then someone just goes, well, you're revving the bike or you're on the clutch too much. And it's easy. Sometimes you'll go through the whole day, but with Justin here, he just picks me up on it straight away and says, right, I'll change that and then I can change it. I should be straight away at the first session of the day doing it right, but I think um, each week it's getting a little bit better and I feel like I am riding the bike a lot better. That's one thing that I feel this year. I've practiced a lot over the winter is just riding the 450. Um, yeah, the way it should be with them. I'm yeah. trying to be a gear higher than what I have been in the past and not rev it so much, which um, which seems to be going a little bit better, makes the whole bike work better. Tennis, golf, yeah. they've all got coaches, but motocross, I think in America a little bit they do, sometimes not coaches so much, but fitness and then it sort of rolls over, but it is nice to have that attract. I think um, our sport is one that lacks in that a little bit because it's just so easy to get it's so easy to see from the outside, especially when you've got another rider that's been there, like Justin, he's, he's raced at the top level. It's so easy, you're just on the clutch three times in that corner. And then I'm at a decent enough level where he only has to tell me once and then I go, yeah, what am I doing? Yeah. Do you know, it's not like he's got to teach me how to do it the right. It's just picking you up on the things that you're just, you just don't even think about it when you're out there. Yeah. Yeah, the bike's, um, I feel like we're in a good place with it. I have my engines being done now by a guy in um, Holland by Rille and um, that feels really good. I'm in a good, yeah, I feel we've done testing with that. He came over a couple of days here and then I went to um, Spain and he flew out there. So I feel my engine's been better than it ever has been. And then um, the suspension, I've done a couple of days testing. We've got a new guy um, there that's doing that in, um, again in Holland. Um, so I've been, yeah, a couple of days after Hallstone, I feel like I improved a lot as um, it wasn't bad at Hallstone, but we just learned a little bit in a race situation what I needed to, um, to make better and um, yeah, my mechanic, everything's good. Steve's, Steve's sort of not let the 450 go a little bit out of the side, but he knows that his focus, he's, he's re completely rebuilt the 250 bike. Um, and uh, and we just got a good a good few people around me that's made my bike a lot better. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I've, I'm in a good place with it. Like I'm happy with the bike and always you might get to Argentina and I might go, well, it's no good at the start, but it's something we've got to, we've got to go there and see, but I think it's going to be all right. Thank <laughs> you.